Hello everyone. Tonight uh, we're going to take a look at a, one of my old favorite kits from Lindbergh. Uh, it's their uh, B-17G Flying Fortress motorized kit. This kit must have been done probably in the early 60s. Uh, there's no date on the instructions. Um, it uh, just says, you know, the address, all that kind of stuff. So I'm probably thinking somewhere 65 will probably catch this. But uh, it's a one of the kits that when I was a kid I just had to have. Uh, there was a neighbor down the street. They had three or four kids, and the oldest one, uh, his parents had gave him a, uh, a chest of drawers or a chest of drawer, whatever you want to call it, but anyway, um, inside he had all of his models and then up on top of it he had this particular model. And uh, when I saw it and he flipped the switch and it all started spinning, I just had to have one. So it was a rather expensive kit at the time. I think it was almost like uh, $3.50. And uh, I had, I had uh, to do a couple weeks of chores to get it and then I had to bug my dad to wind the motors for me because uh, you had to uh, individually wind the motors and put the magnets in and everything else and then wire up the battery box and stuff but anyway got it put together got it painted uh, got the uh, battery box on and it worked and I was just so happy I couldn't see straight brings back a lot of memories I love this box art uh, it wasn't the best in the world but um, it was, uh, in a way, a lot of ground crew action. Uh, props on uh, three of the four engines are spinning. Uh, you know, it's just action on the ground. Uh, Lindbergh had a lot of nice uh, selling items, draws for people on their box art, especially on a lot of their motorized kits. Uh, like I said, kits were not all that great, but for the six, late 50s, early 60s, uh, it was pretty good. Uh, you know, the the highly detailed stuff probably didn't start coming until mid to late 70s, 80s, with Tamiya and other companies stepping up the game from Japan. But uh, this was uh, this was the bee's knees for me as a kid. Uh, 1965, I was. Uh, eight years old and uh, to have a motorized uh, B-17 it was something else. I like the name on it, Blackjack with the uh, stylized bombs with two eyes in it. Um, always thought that was pretty neat. Box is pretty much plain Jane. Uh, it just gives you a um, Diagram of the four electric motors and the pieces and the for it to wire up. Uh, some explanations on the side, movable turrets, stuff like that. Lindbergh Products Incorporated. Uh, in old Skokie, Illinois. And the uh, end piece was basically the same. It's a shame this one's got tape all over it, but you got to take what you can get. Um, kit number... 305M for motorized and 398, as people have always told me, those last three digits were for the retail price. Don't know how true that is, but it sounds good. And then it has a guarantee, if defective, on one end, which I remember. And it's 3 sixteenths of an inch equals a foot. I think that equals out to be like 3 sixty-fourths or uh, 164 scale, something like that. But uh, nice setup. It was a sturdy box. Let's see if I can get this thing back lined up. Let's see here. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. But anyway. Um, after putting up the other B-17s on the uh, 
on my page the other day. I had to go down and find this one. I'm glad I did. Um, I do remember that uh, a lot of people, well, a lot of kids my age had this kit, and the motorizing was the big sales. Uh, Lindbergh did a lot of motorizing, uh, some more than monogram. They did some, like in the 32nd scale P51 see-through, and a couple other things. Ravel had some, uh, but you could find other companies like uh, uh, UPC and uh, Pyro and a bunch of the old kits that uh, basically I don't remember any having motors, but Ideal had like a motorized uh, submarine. Uh, and an aircraft carrier enterprise and these were the things that uh, if you could get your hands on you really wanted the most because of the mere fact that you could take them out and uh, put them in a pool or put them in a pond whatever let it rip I know having the Lindbergh uh, destroyer being motorized and having uh, the uh, cams to follow you got I think three or four different patterns on the cams that you can make it either a circle, a square, a figure eight, and uh, that was really neat. Um, some of the kids from Japan in the later 60s, to my and stuff, had the motorized gearbox and motors in them, and then they had the, uh, what they said, remote control, which was a wired little control box, but that was awfully neat. Um, there's not a lot of motorized stuff coming out this today for even, some of the jets back then had motors in them with a little spinner that made a jet engine sound. Um, some of them had, uh, you know, motors for props and stuff, but today I don't know if there's much of anything that's out there that's motorized from the factory. I know Trumpeter did the... 200 scale Arizona, a motorized version with a controller and everything, and was asking another $200 more for it. But uh, these were uh, something that was uh, a lot of fun, brings back a lot of memories of setting down and working as hard as you could to get the motors to work, especially on some of the Lindbergh large eight scale cars. <laughs> Um, there was a, there was a, uh, one company, I forget who it was, it may have been Ideal or it may have been, uh, Renoir or one of them that had a quarter scale car. It was motorized in some versions. They had V8 engines that were motorized, but the quarter scale car had the chassis in one kit and then the body in another kit kit that you bought I think it was two or three kits to make the whole car and I don't know if it was like a 50s Pontiac or whatever but man that was something to see built uh, I got to see a couple of those over the years never did get to own one but uh, I decided I'd bring it out and let you take a look at it hopefully uh, you've enjoyed this um, oh, and the other thing, I think this was the only version of the motorized B-17G that was done pre-70s. I don't think there was one in the 50s. I don't think there was one in the 70s. Later they came out with one, which I'll show in a little while, probably in, in the 80s. Same kit, same motorizing. Different box art, more updated uh, look and everything. But I think this was the only one that they did originally. So this would be, I'm pretty sure, the original box art for the first uh, motorized B-17 from Lindbergh. So, anyway, hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching. 
Um, if you would please hit the like, bu like button, it would uh, help me out a bunch, and maybe subscribe. It would tell uh, YouTube that people are watching these and enjoying them. Uh, once again, thank you very much. Y'all have a good evening. Be safe. Talk to y'all later. Bye.